over to the Nerd Rotted. Tell them Tyrone Magnus sent you and subscribe. Now, are you ready to laugh with me? All right. Let's enjoy ourselves here. What in the hell? <laughs> A huge explosion in Oxfordshire in the United Kingdom. Let's take a look at this because uh, we do have some uh, very uh, fiery visual. You can see this is a pretty significant situation. Witnesses reported seeing a fireball light up the night sky after the blast. Producer says we do have uh, some video. Oh my God. That is massive. That is Richard, have authorities established the cause of this explosion? Uh. Nerdorotic.com Greetings, you over one million awakening wonders and 40% who haven't subscribed yet. After a season one that was throwing up massive red flags before it even came out, including but not limited to questionable showrunners with questionable talent and questionable connections, preemptive attacks on the fans in the press, embarrassing promotional interviews, flying out shills to meet the showrunners, who of course ah. have glowing reviews, ah. caught that. Ratios, abysmal audience scores, and losing most of the audience that you had left by the time the season ended. You have to ask how long can... Oh, I'm sorry, Garrett. I should have been specific. After a Rings of Power season one that was throwing up massive red flags before the show even premiered, including but not limited to questionable showrunners with questionable experience and questionable connections, preemptive attacks on the fans in the press, and embarrassing promotional interviews, flying out shills to meet the showrunners, who of course gave glowing reviews, massive ratios, abysmal audience scores, and losing 63% of the audience by the time season one ended. Oh boy. You have to ask, will Hollywood ever learn? How long can this go on? Well, we found out do. the Acolyte. <laughs> right down the top the vanity project of a megalomaniac bond villain billionaire <laughs> who has the pocket change to drop 42 million on a massive 10,000 year cuckoo clock that ticks once a year in the Texas mountains that's totally not a cover for a secret base I guess as far as the rings of power is concerned it's gonna be a long time and I can hear you ask another question Will Amazon learn from the mistakes they made in season one? Well, at least they fixed one big problem, getting rid of all those male directors. And I gotta give credit where credit is due. At least they didn't release this season on the anniversary of Professor Tolkien's death. And mm -hmm. to answer your second question, no. Amazon <laughs> did not learn from their mistakes. Right. <laughs> if you please everyone, then you're not doing your job right. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the actual f*** did you just say to me right now? Get if you <laughs> If you're not pleasing everyone, you're not doing it. Say that again, please. Say that going to the again, of please. Earth and just like reeking. Question: No, Amazon did not learn from their mistakes. If you please everyone, then you're not doing your job right. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the actual f*** did you just say to me right now? Get out of my sight. Him. Listen, I know that you'll never please everyone. That I understand that, but you want to please most of your fan base. You want to please most of your market or you're planning to fail. It's, oh, good Lord. And basically going to different parts of Middle Earth and just like wreaking havoc. Um, he goes somewhere and he, then he destroys it and then leaves and goes yeah. somewhere else and destroys that and then leaves. Yeah. We have a murderer's row. So now we're sticking so close to the cannon. You sure about that? <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> Recording, being certified fresh, boosted by reviews from questionable outlets like the world famous El Istimudu or Marvelous Geeks Media, The Gospel Coalition, Mama's Geeky, Espinoff. <laughs> but why though, spelled T H O, a geek community? Toysto.net, The Film Yap, Digital Mafia Talkies got in there twice. 
but it appears that some of the big boys have turned on him, including the outlet that penned the original preemptive attack on fans for season one. Variety, the Rings of Power makes Lord of the Rings a boring slog in a lifeless season two. Or The Hollywood Reporter from Angie Han, mm -hmm. the Rings of Power review. Season two of Amazon's fantasy prequel is too epic for its own. It's funny how the outlets that will a lot of times help them out are turning on them. We're all so sick and tired of this. Just start making good content again. Good. And Screen Rant, of all places, the Rings of Power Season 2 review. Amazon's grand plan crumbles as Sarans begins. It looks like he's coming out of butt, which is applicable because this show comes out of a creatively bankrupt butt. You know, it's dark times when I'm agreeing with Variety, The Hollywood Reporter, and Screen Rant, but here we are. I've put this off long enough. It's time to talk about the crime against imagination that mocks and shames Professor Tolkien's work. The Rings of Power Season 2. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we go! Rims of power. The rims of power. This mark's very existence proves Sauron escaped. The evil is gone. You have not seen what I have seen. Looks can be deceiving. <laughs> there is a tempest in me. My people have no king. You are <coughs> the only Magnetic Your tempest. have no king for you. I am. Salamas will fall. But his brothers. Bring any extra bags? No, nobody brought an extra bag. <laughs> 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 That's nasty. <laughs> Workers Union. I work with a lot of fine men who have families to feed. Now, I don't know about y'all, but we worked long and hard to get our pay up to a level where we can make a decent living. And these not fears took our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. I've had many names. <laughs> <laughs> Mouse trap. Flip the man in the pan. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I always remembered that part from the Mouse Trap commercial. Look up Mouse Trap 1980s commercial. You'll see it. Flip the man in the pan. Watch, it's, it's a funny commercial. You'd understand why a kid would like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kate flapping. And a year full of repurposed sequels and prequels filled with repurposed dialogue and scenes. It shouldn't surprise anyone that the Rings of Power season two, episode one's very first line is Sauron repurposing some Gandalf dialogue from the books. But stories. Go listen to. I remember the way you used to love me. Go listen to that by Faith Evans. And then come listen to this. At this part, I swear the beats sound alike. Is that all a Sauron's fall long, long ago? That is so. But always, after a respite, the shadow takes another shape and grows again. Always after a defeat, the shadow takes another shape and grows again. And no, obviously, this isn't Charlie Vickers, Hal Brand slash Sauron. It's a flashback with some pudgy guy who looks like he just got back from a Ren Fair. <laughs> I've been to one of them before. They saw the giant legs. Uh, I guess they're supposed to be turkey legs, but I've heard people actually said that they're really emu legs that they're selling. Anyway, they're good. Get that? You got to be a savage. You got to go and get that. And you got to get the big glass of beer, ale, whatever it is. Carry it around and ah, ah, where are the witches? <laughs> that's what you got to do at least once when you go. By the way, that song on uh, Crown, I've always thought it was a really cool bad guy crown. 
For Tartatar, the Lord of Snacks, in the books after the defeat of Morgoth, Sauron lays low for a few hundred years and not much is known until now. Thank hmm. you, we have the keen minds at Amazon, including their all-female director staff, to give us the untold story. Turns out Fatatar, the Lord of Ding Dongs, is going to take over for Morgoth and crown himself the new Dark Lord. And his coronation is in front of a crowd of orcs that quite Who disrupts my coronation? they're for a modern audience. They're kinder. They're gentler. They're misunderstood. And they just want to hang out with their papa, Adar, one of many characters Amazon completely made up, formerly portrayed by Joseph Molly. He's one of two actors who had the good sense to leave this show after season one. And what do you know it? Sauron <laughs> gets betrayed by you recast left, huh? Adar. And Sauron, the great dark sorcerer, smart. master of phantoms and shadows, lord of werewolves, slayer of the king of Gondor, Elendil, Slayer of High King Gilgalad. Oops, spoilers. Get Caesared by a dozen <laughs> sensitive orcs. And this all happens in a fortress in Fadadwaith, which, if you remember, is the same fortress where Guy Ladriel killed an ice troll in under 10 seconds. <laughs> and for you, Legolas, this is a new bow, so that you may kill a troll as quickly as I did in under 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Anywho, mm -hmm. Sauron turns into the Venom symbiote, eats a rat, a millipede, and a peasant woman, and turns into Halbrand, so Tolkienian. And since Tolkien is so slow and prodding with his multiple invented languages, his meticulous world building, and that pesky characterization, Amazon decided to speed things up a bit. Well, there's people who every time I look at something, it looks like it could be improved. You know, there's something wrong with it. And instead of Sauron laying low for 500 years, it's uh, like a day. After that, Sauron runs into an NPC who speaks fluent platitude. There's another life waiting for you. You just have to turn toward it. But our fates are never certain. And fortunes can turn for even the most powerful. A sure path may crumble, but there's always another. Often, it can lead us someplace better. What? And in the very next scene, which is probably that night, they know each other so well, Mr. Platitude knows when he's having bad dreams. Nightmares again. What haunts you so? Of the legal. All of us have done things that we care not to admit. And this just so happens to be the ship that gets destroyed by the monster from season one that puts Sauron on a raft mm. where he meets Guy Ladriel in the middle of the ocean. Now, why on Middle Earth would you want to remind anyone that that scene actually happened? Huh. But the only explanation is... They're proud of it. That's right, Galadriel, who was hunting Sauron, runs into him in the middle of the ocean. They eventually end up on a ship. So you can ship Galadriel and Sauron. Get it? <laughs> 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 meet in an official promo from Amazon for the Rings of Power Season 2, they mention Halandriel. The Haladriel tease, I love you! Oh. <laughs> oh god for shipping pronouns and galadriel <laughs> and did you hear that noise that was tolkien's grave explode that is forever burned into my memory every time i see see heels versus baby face i just think pronouns Loading again. Here's an idea. Why don't you ship Galadriel with, say, her husband, Celeborn, who's very much alive in the books. And mm. it's time for another repurposed scene. Remember when Arwen was chased by the Nazguls in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Except this time, it's Guy Ladriel chasing Doogie Elrond. <laughs> Now, Guy Ladriel is trying to get the Three Rings of Power from Elrond, who wants to destroy him, because Guy Ladriel conveniently left behind a scroll that tells everyone that Halbrand was Sauron. Eventually, Guy Ladriel and Doogie Elrond end up in High District Manager Gilgalad's office. And the jig is up, and Guy Ladriel finally has to admit that Halbrand is Sauron. She knew it and didn't tell them. He played a part in the forging of the Rings of Power, and she wanted to jump his Badadur. Now, in the books, the three Rings of Power, Narya, Nenya, and Vilya, were the last Rings of Power forged alone by Celebrimbor without Sauron's direct influence prior to the forging of the One Ring. So they acted differently, and their purpose was to slow the natural decaying of the world. But because Amazon mm. knows better in the show, they forged the three elven rings of power first. And it's only because it was Guy Ladriel's idea and the master smith of Middle-earth, Celebrimbor, just learned about this thing called Alloy from Sauron. Aside from the fact that within the frame of the show, every bad thing that happens now is directly Guy Ladriel's fault, for not telling anybody Halbrand was Sauron, she gets a slight talking to from High District Manager Gilgalad, who now demands that Elrond give back the rings. Instead of doing that, Doogie Elrond acts as a surrogate for the audience and jumps off a cliff. 
Now in Tolkien's secondary world, many elves have fallen from high places and died, but this is a world where they can survive pyroclastic flows. <laughs> but it's time we check in on female Frodo and the stranger who's totally not Gandalf. Female and Frodo. In the interest of saving time, we're now going to call him Dan Galf. And mystery boxing this guy's Dan name Galf. for over a season and a half. It looks like his name is Dan. I've ever seen in storytelling. <laughs> and their scene opens up with some more mind reading. Got that look in your eye. You had that dream again last night. Didn't, you? Didn't we just see that? <laughs> Nightmares again. Is there a fucking echo in here? <laughs> After a scene where they clearly want to push eat the bugs. I can feel the legs in the throat. That's the best part. They're dancing. It's time to repurpose. Oh, they ain't dancing. Jackson's Lord of the Rings. Remember the two towers? It can't be. Still trees. We're going in circles. This looks strangely familiar. Because we've been here before. Hmm. We're going in circles. Remember when Sam and Frodo were followed by Gollum? <laughs> it turns out they're also being followed by some Easterlings who look like something out of Farscape, a show that is a thousand times better with a thousandth of the budget. Now, of course, Doogie Elron survives and he goes to a character that we've been waiting to see Heard in the shipwright, a ring bearer, an elf with a beard, the oldest and wisest of their kind. You know how I know this? Please forgive the unexpected nature of my visit, but I have nowhere else to turn. You are the oldest and wisest of our kind. Who walks up to anybody and says this? Hey, Garrett, you're the reasonably intelligent importer blackest of our kind. Doogie Elrond tells Kierden he wants to destroy the rings, and because it's been a few minutes, it's time for some more repurposed dialogue. The rings must be destroyed. Do so, and the age of the elves will end. We will be abandoning all from Earth to its fate. The time of the elves is over. Hmm. Do we leave Mr. Anderson. After discovering Kierden's going to destroy the rings, High District Manager Gilgalad black pills and gathers the elves to leave Middle Earth, despite knowing that Sauron is back. But Gilgalad is a good High District Manager because he manages to get this done in half a day. But what do you know it? Right when they're singing their goodbye hymn, Kierden shows up with the rings of power saying that they work. And despite this show taking the six foot four Galadriel, the embodiment of femininity and grace, the Lady of Lothlorien, the Lady of Light, and turning her into a midget warrior woman, the commander of the hmm. Northern Armies, Guy Ladriel, the girl Barian, the Lady of Fight, the woman who helped Sauron return and then hid that fact, the ring Nenya chooses her. And then we get our money shot with the rings of power, which looks like it went on a little too long. Look at all those shaking hands. <laughs> yeah. gone. Now, earlier on in the episode, the wise and noble High King Gil Gallag composed the most important message. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid learning that, like, when you try to, if you really pay attention to your hand, you're trying to hold it straight. Like, if you look at it, you're going to notice that it's always going to be moving. And that's because your mind is always seeking to correct it to keep it straight or something like that so that's funny all right we need you to all hold your hands steady while we get a shot of the rings and action <laughs> your hands is like <laughs> in middle earth in half a millennia telling grandma brimbor that halbrand is sauron sure it's something Guy Ladriel could have told him, but that's not important right now. So what does the wisest and noblest of elf leaders do? Does no. he send out multiple elves to make sure the message makes it? Or no. does he just give it to one guy and say, it'll be fine. If you guess the latter, you're watching the Rings of Power on Amazon Prime. I sure hope nothing happens to that guy. Because that would thwart the master plan of our thirst trap, Dark Lord. So let's circle back to Sauron while he circles back from Mordor to Eregion so Amazon Prime can circle back to the lore. After heading down to the shiny and brand new Mordor, Sauron does his best Moses impression. Let my people go. And Sauron's big master plan is to convince Adar that he's still the king of the Southlands, which he does, and to convince Adar to send him back to Aregion with the elves so he can stop Sauron, who he totally isn't, which he does. And on the way out the door, he gets poor Waldrig killed. You know, the oh. guy who just wanted to follow Sauron and helped create Mordor in an afternoon. Also, he could go back and forge the rest of the Rings of Power, which he should have done in the first place, as Anatar, the Lord of Gifts, which they should have done in the first place. Which was something, apparently, they added in at the last moment. But we didn't know we'd do the Anatar thing. Mm. That was something that came to the piece quite late on. Give me the meat. 
Back to Guy Ladriel, who has a vision of Kella Brimbor, who basically <laughs> blames her for everything that's about to happen. What news? I've had an unexpected visitor. He has returned already. Are they not seeds you planted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's having these visions is because the rings have rekindled them. Oh, what's that? It's time for some more repurposed dialogue. You believe the rings have kindled your ability to see that which has not yet come to pass. And some things that have not yet come to pass. But now High District Manager Gil Gallad is finally going to do something now that he knows who Sauron is, no thanks to Guy Ladriel. So they plan to attack the brand new shiny Mordor. How do they know Sauron is there? What of the whereabouts of Sauron? Our spies indicate that Sauron was last seen traveling into Mordor. I mean, I'm not sure how, seeing that no one knew who Sauron was at the end of season one when he entered Mordor. What do you have, just thousands of elves hanging around the mountains? And how in the hell did they miss all those orcs digging trenches from season one? And how would they know what Halbrand looked like? Despite the show being long and prodding, it obviously borrowed the teleporter from the later seasons of Game of Thrones, and you have no idea how much time has passed. But at least those elven spies hanging out in mountains and recognizing people they've never seen before can at least send messages that get received because wouldn't you know it that one lone guy with the most important message in middle earth for the last 500 years halbrand is sauron gets killed that was a lucky break for the dark third hmm. lord now credit to the show they did mention in passing that other messages have been sent to grandma brimbor but they've been unanswered our letters to keller brimbor have all gone unanswered i fear sauron may be in a region now did high district manager gil gallad do anything about it nah Guy Ladriel had to talk him into it. And that's a good thing because Halbrand goes back to Aregion where everyone is clueless that he's Sauron. Well, isn't that convenient for you? <laughs> and after playing hard to get for a little while, Grandma Brimbor invites Sauron in to manipulate and seduce him into creating more rings that they should have made before the elven rings. And as far as this statement from the showrunners is concerned, So many of us in the LGBT community see ourselves in Tolkien's writings. Any chance we'll see ourselves on the show Maybe you have already. Grandma Brimbor is my pick. Hey, guess who's back? Back again. Slim Lady's back. Tell a friend. And apparently <laughs> everyone outside of Oregion knows that Sauron is back and that he's taken a new form. Sauron's shadow is deepening. It is said he has taken a new form to deceive his enemies. And Feminem works for a dark wizard in Rune that either Amazon made up, or worse, they're going to do something stupid like make him the Witch King of Angmar. And before anyone says, that doesn't make any sense. For one, you're right, but that hasn't stopped him. Case in point, the possibly made up dark wizard Wizard and Feminem are after Dan Gal, female Frodo and female Sam. They send out some bad guys from Mad Max, no, not the real Mad Max, Fury Road or Furiosa. And this gives them another opportunity to give us some repurposed scenes. <laughs> bad guys from Furiosa eventually catch up with Dan Gal, female Sam and female Frodo at a well, and I can't imagine anything bad happening here. It just has a giant flag with the Eye of Sauron on it. And this brings us to my favorite scene in all three of the premiere episodes. Dan Gal picks up a stick, creates a dust devil that blows away the bad guys from Furiosa and mm. female Sam and female Frodo. This brings us to the second most cringe-inducing moment in this <laughs> <laughs> who should have been in season one, but Amazon really had to ship. I used to do that all the time when I was a kid. People could hear me all the way down the street doing it. <laughs> and a lot of people didn't know what I was doing. And they would eventually see a goofy cartoon from back in the day. And they would get it. <laughs> Paladriel and the shape-shifting lord of werewolves, phantoms, and shadows. The mighty Sauron the Great puts on a wig. And then he says this. <laughs> What, are we some kind of Lord of the Rings? <laughs> oh, and if you thought the repurposing was over, oh, my sweet summer child, the man who cut the ring from Sauron's hand, mm. Isildur, surprisingly enough, didn't die at the end of season one. Apparently, he was caught by Shelob. You know, Isildur wakes up in a spider cave and has to fight Shelob in the first sequence, so... And not just any Shelob. Ungoliant is a primordial being that formed into a giant spider that helped Melkor destroy the trees of Valinor, who also happens to mm. be an ancestor of Shelob, and I'm still holding out for <laughs> baby Shelob. <laughs> and my prayers have been answered, according to the Nerdist from Maxim Baldry. So was that Shelob you fight in episode three? In episode three, it's Shelob. It's baby Shelob. 
Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Aside from all the <laughs> aforementioned problems with this show, one of its biggest is being packed with characters you can give a crap about. Meandering around in an uninteresting, unengaging, creative, bankrupt story that's filled with and thens. And then a kind of look like Nicolas Cage from that angle. I could give a crap what her name is <laughs> and runs into Don Lemonless. This brings us to the second person who had the good sense to leave this show after season one. The actress whose name I cannot pronounce who played Bronwyn because she did. And it's a damn shame we're not going to get that guess who's coming to second breakfast. And now Don Lemonless is a single dad to Theo. That's at least until he goes out to get some pipe weed and never comes home. One of the worst travesties of this show, which there are many, is the Numenorians And their move armor, they're all supposed to be an Numenorians it reminds me of Numenos. It's an organic cookie that you can get from any place that sells organic cookies. Look them up, they're pretty good. My favorite Numenos are the peppermint cream ones. They're Oreos with peppermint cream. Oh my God! Average height of six foot four, and Alindial is supposed to be almost eight feet tall. That's why they call him Alindial the Tall. Instead, we get a bunch of people who look like YouTubers. Now, to be fair to Amazon, <laughs> they have to play it fast and loose with the timeline. The events from the books that this fanfic is derived from happens just a little bit after the forging of the Rings of Power. But it's not long, only 1,800 years. And instead of our Farazon forcing his cousin Muriel into marriage to seize the throne, Amazon has chosen a different path because they wouldn't want to rob Muriel of her agency. It sounds like it's pretty easy to become a king in the Rings of Power. You either need to steal a necklace or stand next to an eagle. Unfortunately, Amazon missed an opportunity to fix what Peter Jackson didn't do in his films. The eagles can talk. Now, one of the few compliments I gave the Rings of Power was the looks of the Dwarves and cause a doom. Unfortunately, their storyline oh, nice. was incredibly boring and it was filled with the first female dwarf of color in this show, Disa. Literally. The show insinuates Sauron causes an earthquake that collapses the sun shafts of Khazad Doom, making it impossible for the famous vegetarian dwarfs to grow their crops. But let's be real, Disa could probably skip a couple meals. You think this is about food? <laughs> yup! <laughs> dwarves hollowing out an entire mountain, the dwarven health and safety inspector they says they can't take on sun him. shafts. Other than that, the rest of the dwarf storyline is wasted with Disa yapping and waiting for Durin the fourth to talk to his dad during the third. But they're in luck. Thanks to Sauron, Grandma Brimbor offers the dwarves a deal. You give us Mithril, we'll make you some rings. Hey, remember Peter Jackson's The Hobbit? Harold Elrond said he'd think of little else than helping his dwarven friends. He speaks of you so fondly. Funny, he's never mentioned you. Do you have your grandfather's bearing? A new thrall when he ruled under the mountain? Indeed. Made no mention of you. Eventually, the Durans reconcile and agree to the deal, and the forging of the Rings of Power, out of order, has begun. It looks like Season 2 is going to be the character assassination of Sauron, mm -hmm. just like Season 1 was the character assassination of Galadriel, but they're not quite done with her yet. Guy Ladriel finally has to come to terms with something she never had to deal with in the books falling under the influence of Sauron. Now, Tolkien mm. is famous for a lot of things, but mostly for his use of language. It is unequaled. While the Rings of Power's mm. use of dialogue is a good argument for AI. From the writing staff that gave us this banger. Do you know why a ship floats and a stone cannot? What? <laughs> the ship has a secret. For unlike the stone, her gaze is not tired but up. Fixed upon the light that guides her. Keep in mind, these writers went on strike to get more money so they can give us more of this. Sauron used me, and under his hand I was played like a harp to a melody not of my choosing. And yes, they're really leaning into the shipping, and this is character assassination right up there with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery, Han Solo and The Force Awakens, Luke Skywalker and The Last Jedi, and The Doctor and Doctor Who. Sauron looked inside, <sighs> plucked the very song of your soul, note by note, making himself out to be exactly what you needed, the lost king who could ride you to victory. Things go well, I might be showing her my O face. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know I'm not, I'm not oh. <laughs> but wait! There's more! After all the talk of morally gray characters on the red carpet, we have the single most cringe inducing scene in this show New Wild Orcs in Tolkien. We are safe here. We have a home. Must we go to war again? Gotta be fucking kidding. Tell you that we will never truly be safe. Like they were mindless monsters before. What are you talking? What are you doing? Until we made certain that Sauron is no more. But you guys just don't understand. 
The orcs just want to multiply, raise their kids, be evil, and practice their corrupted form of life in peace. This has sparked a debate online that's been going on in the Tolkien fandom for quite a while. Are orcs evil? Yes. Are they irredeemable? Well, that's something that's perfectly fine to discuss within the works of the professor, but if you're trying to use it to justify anything in this show while ignoring everything else... Be silent. Keep your full tongue behind your teeth. Fuck this show. As I said with season <laughs> one, this is the most expensive fan fiction ever mm -hmm. made. And season two is no different. It plays out like a boring, contrived, soulless series of events with all the charm of an HR seminar. Reducing the lore in the books to Easter eggs. And while this is a horrible adaptation and a crime against the imagination, there was some effort put in because you really need to try to butcher the characters of Galadriel and Sauron this badly. Numenorians didn't look like programmers at Google. Nah. Sauron wasn't blinded in a war because she was never a warrior. <laughs> Gandalf wasn't running around in the desert with female Sam and female Frodo, and he wasn't in the Second Age at all. There was no dark wizard in Rune with Feminem. There's only one Durin at a time. Galadriel wasn't a midget sex-starved Sauron simp, commander of the Northern Army. <laughs> He's so gone off. didn't cry. <laughs> but hey, at least we have Warner Brothers War of the Rahiram. <laughs> Don't get down, ladies and gentlemen of the fellowship, and hold the line. You beat Amazon down once before, and it looks like you're already doing it again. And I'm absolutely sure any minute now we're all going to be called a bunch of bigots, and they'll tell us that John Ronald Rule, Tolkien himself, would have loved this show. Yeah, he right. He loved the world. And he was in no conceivable sense an isn't he? The modern world meant for him essentially the machine. So the way he speaks of the machine, and he more than once expressly said that it was one of the underlying themes for him in The Lord of the Rings was the machine. The machine means for him, meant for him. It meant coercion, domination, for him the great enemy. Coercion of other minds and other wills. This is tyranny. But he also saw the characteristic activity of the modern world is the coercion, the tyrannous reformation of the earth. Ergoronic.com. There you have it, folks. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for going through uh, hell for us. Your erotic, critical drinker, all others, thank you for your duty. <sighs> 10 million subscribers. <laughs> Woo!